Hey guys, what's up? This is Orb and uh, today I want to talk about a uh, thing that I've been wanting to talk uh, for a long time now. Uh, I've always wanted to talk about this, get this uh, thing off my chest, but um, I didn't have enough motivation to do so, but uh, things off late, uh, things that I've been seeing off late um, kind of like made me want to talk about this more and more and here it is. So this is the day I rant about everything that I have to rant about uh, this game uh, or certain things and the game actually. So uh, I'm going to be annotating different sections of this video about certain topics that I talk about uh, so that if you're not interested to listen to any particular thing that I have to say about it you can skip to other sections. Um, but um, basically I want to talk about three things. One is uh, what I've seen uh, during the past couple of weeks. Um, this is about um, some gamers or some people in the community not respecting the devs. And the second thing is just my, uh, my two cents on what I have actually come across and what I've, uh, what I've uh, understood from my personal experience. Uh, and maybe this could serve as uh, the other side of the coin uh, to respecting the devs. I don't know, you be the judge for yourself. And the third section, which is probably going to be the bigger section, is um, just my uh, whole uh, bunch of opinions on the way the game uh, is heading, right from ACB. So I'm going to talk about um, all the games, all the multiplayer games that have come out till date, and um, just try to summarize. Um, the way I see things, um, the way I see that the multiplayer games have changed over over the couple of years. So, uh, without waiting for much time, uh, let me get this started with. So, the first thing um, about respecting the devs, um, I think it's even pointless to uh, talk about the raw subject without having or without addressing the reason for it, because. Uh, tell me one category of people who doesn't deserve respect. I'm not talking about the uh, uh, anti-socials here. Um, I hope you get what I mean. But I'm talking about a normal person who has some opinions uh, and who may be right or wrong about stating an opinion. So everyone deserves respect in my eyes. Uh, unless he's uh, kind of like uh, being rude uh, by insulting or trash talking about your family and friends or close friends and things like that I don't see any particular reason to actually not want to respect anyone um, that's just my take on it but the second part of it is um, the reason um, as to why some people um, disrespect the devs so once again when I'm talking about it um, you have to understand that it's a very wide spectrum of, of things that's happening here. Some people uh, are just outright rude uh, to the devs and some people are uh, just stating their opinions in a sarcastic manner or maybe um, uh, giving out opinions with a slight tinge of anger towards it. Um, so what exactly is considered uh, being disrespectful to the devs? So this is what I want to talk about basically. Um, if you are thinking about um, anyone who's kind of like bad mouthing uh, the devs for whatever reason, uh, that's no excuse. I mean, um, just uh, quoting myself from the first few minutes of my video, um, everyone deserves respect. So if he's just being disrespectful in a very blatant manner, it's it's not even up for any discussions. He's just wrong. He's just wrong. Um, but um, Having said that, I've seen uh, people uh, have been wrongly uh, taken as being disrespectful when they're just giving out their opinions. Uh, like, are they being really calm about it? Or are they being angry about it? That's a, that's a different question again. Uh, but um, uh, just to keep things simple, let's just assume that they have a very valid reason for being angry. All right. Um, just to give you a few examples, um, being in a limited mode uh, for a couple of days uh, or not being able to group up with friends or not able to join friends' game 
or um, the issue that I've been facing on PS4 uh, where your game gets stuck on updating parameters. I know for a fact that these issues are not seen by just one person. I've had several friends who've had these issues, the ones that I've named just now. So um, when someone's facing such a thing, uh, do you think it's um, really, really fair to assume that he keeps his uh, composure when he talks to Dev about his issues? I don't think so. If you're expecting that, um, then you must be a saint. Uh, and I just want to uh, take a couple of seconds to remind you that not everyone in this world are of your caliber. But if you can uh, acknowledge the fact that some people will feel the need to rant about it, just go on, listen to what I had to say. Um, but before I even complain about it, I want to uh, take a moment uh, to state the obvious, actually. The devs who've been working on this game are actually doing a good job uh, at it. I mean, it's no joke to kind of develop a game as good as this. Um, it takes a lot of effort. So me being a software developer myself, I know what pain it takes to bring uh, a software or a game of this magnitude. Um, if I'm not wrong, I'm pretty sure that some devs would have given up on holidays or weekends to uh, complete the game or some might have gone uh, an extra step and sacrificed a portion of their private life to make this game happen. So uh, it goes without saying that um, they deserve kudos or props for, for their efforts at the game. But while having said that, let me just give you a small analogy. Say you're driving a car, all right? Um, you buy a brand new car and say it breaks down every 10 miles. Every 10 miles you drive it, it breaks down. When such a thing happens to you over and over again, what's your first instinct is going to be like? Do you remember all the good work that have been put into the development or design of the car? Or do you feel like uh, swinging a word or two at the car company? What do you think? I'm just going to leave that open for you to think about it for a second. That's what I thought. Just have an open mind about some people actually venting to the devs about their issues with the game. So um, when you're judging someone for being angry towards a dev, try to understand uh, what he could be going through and try to at least take it into consideration as to the other side of the story. Um, whether it's valid or not, it's a different thing. But if you at least uh, acknowledge the fact that he has a reason to be angry, there's a certain way to deal with it. And to be really honest, and I'm sorry if it hurts anyone, I've seen a couple of devs not do it that way. I mean, they know it's a problem, but the way they've handled things or criticism about certain genuine issues, it's wrong. I mean, if they know it's an issue, I think they should have dealt with such a criticism in a different way. Just my two cents about it. I know it's going to be an open stage for all sorts of arguments, but hey, <laughs> I just give you my opinion on it. Um, feel free to argue about it. Do whatever you want. So this is all I had to say about the whole topic of devs are disrespecting. I mean, not the devs. I mean, sorry, the gamers disrespecting the devs. Um, I actually didn't expect to take this long to talk about these two things. I think I might have to um, extend this video. I'm thinking, I'm thinking if I want to uh, make a second part to this video or just continue. Huh. Decisions. Anyways, let me just continue talking for the moment. And um, the third thing that I wanted to talk about um, is my whole uh, view on the the direction AC multiplayer is headed towards. No one has asked for it, but it, it's just some things, you know, that I wanted to get them off my chest. I've always wanted to talk about this, but uh, things that I've been hearing and seeing of late has made me uh, want to do this more and more, and I just hit the breaking point. So um, I started playing the multiplayer of the game in uh, December 2010, when the game came out. Uh, but I didn't touch or get into the multiplayer uh, quickly. I just tested it out, maybe one or two games, uh, I guess, uh, because I was more into the single player of it. 
for those of you who didn't know the studio that has made the game uh, was responsible for uh, making another game or a series which was my personal favorite uh, the Prince of Persia uh, trilogy and not talking about the trashy uh, Prince of Persia which came out late like the latest one not that I'm talking about the sense of time warrior within and two thrones so this trilogy was um, I think one of my all-time favorite game series uh, so this game of Assassin's Creed is done by the same studio so being a huge fan of Prince of Persia um, when I heard that they were gonna stop uh, about this um, uh, franchise that was Prince of Persia and then take out the next one which was Assassin's Creed I was actually excited I was uh, more excited about the single player of it so I've been with this AC community if you want to call it uh, from day one actually uh, but uh, like I said, till December, I was mainly into single player. But with ACB, the first installment of the multiplayer came out. Um, I was interested. I just tested out a couple of games or two, but I was too uh, curious as to what happens in single player. So I skipped it and uh, some things happened. Exams came in between and uh, I did get uh, enough time to actually start playing multiplayer uh, for a good, a good amount starting April. Uh, in 2011 I guess so uh, ever since then I've been playing uh, this multiplayer like crazy because um, my gaming background is just FPS games Counter-Strike 1.6 all day every day uh, and Quake 3 Arena and uh, racing games like Need for Speed um, Underground 2 Most Wanted blah 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 all NFS games so coming from that background this was something really different this multiplayer was, was something that I hadn't played before. The concept was new, the concept was good, it was very solid. Oops, sorry, burp. So it got me addicted to, uh, I got addicted to the game, the multiplayer that is. Um, so ever since then, I haven't looked back and I enjoyed uh, playing Brotherhood like crazy. A few of the best days of my gaming uh, life, I should say. Uh, the game was perfect. I mean, even to this day, I believe that the most balanced game was ACB. Uh, talk about balance. I know what some of you guys might be thinking. You might be thinking that the latest game is the most balanced one. Maybe AC3 was the most balanced one, or it was definitely more balanced than ACB. Um, I have to disagree because I think there is a difference in uh, the things that we call balance. For me, the balance is in the gameplay, not in a set of abilities. Because what I've seen in later games is that they have a certain set of abilities which is being crutched on and they have another set of abilities to counter those specific ones. So that is not balance in my eyes. In my eyes, the actual balance, the true balance is uh, balancing different types of game styles. Just to give you an example, in free-for-all um, game modes back in Brotherhood, there were like two main groups of uh, people who used to play Wanted. Uh, one used to run on the roofs and run everywhere and get good kills, actually. Uh, when I say running, it's not running in front of target and chase killing them. It's, it's just running to cut them off and get good kills uh, on their targets. Maybe hidden poisons and things like that. So that was one category of people and the other one was people who played the game very defensively uh, like go with mute and smoke bomb and try to defend yourself while defending yourself is the main uh, objective and then try to get good kills so when you put these two different game styles of people who played these two different game styles in the lobby in ACB I'm pretty sure that not one group of people felt handicapped playing against the other type of game style the game was so perfectly balanced, uh, it actually let you play the game you wanted to play without feeling the uh, need or without feeling uh, handicapped in any way. Same goes with the team modes, like there's a group of people who play Manhunt, right? I'm talking about Manhunt. There's a group of people who try to wall and try to get stuns from the pursuers and play the game that way. And there's another group of people who try to point star. Just run around in the defense round with the main and only intention to not give as many points to your opponent team which is a tactic and uh, not a tactic that i would consider it to be an honorable one at least but it's a tactic right but with acb you could deal with different play styles 
easily or without feeling much anger or frustration towards it but i cannot cannot say the same thing about the later games so in my eyes even to this day brotherhood still remains to be the most balanced game of all but um, do i mean that it didn't have its flaws definitely not i mean it, the game had its faults it had to be improvised it could be improvised on certain things but it was perfect it worked then uh, came acr which was the next game to acb assassin's creed revelations right so with acr they actually try to address to some of the issues which were seen in acb like for instance the smoke bomb um, it didn't have the vertical range so the smoke bomb was really bad when used on a staircase so the game actually tried to um, buff the smoke and it brought in two other uh, major changes like the reverse detection meter or the reverse approach meter and the contested kills so um, i'm pretty sure uh, when the devs were asked about the reason to uh, bring in these changes one of the reasons if not the only one was uh, to bring out a certain balance between the older players and the newer players and honest to god I've been hearing the same reason or same justification for every every single change that are made through the next games. I call shenanigans on that. It's really stupid because for one, they are uh, severely underestimating the learning capabilities of players because no one remains a noob or a new player forever. He's going to learn things real quick. I mean, it actually it's the game's job to teach people how to play the game properly. Just a quick example, uh, Dark Souls. Uh, if you haven't even heard about the game, just try it out for yourself. But when you started the game, Dark Souls kills you so many times in so many different ways. Uh, it makes you rage, it makes you angry, but but it's, it's more of an anger towards the way you approached things, you know? Um, you did a very uh, basic mistake and the game is telling you, hey, don't do things that way. That's not how you're meant to do things. If you do that, you're gonna die. Try to be more careful. Try to find out different ways to do the same thing. So that's what the game actually taught us uh, by not actually telling us anything. And that's how I'm. That's how I think any game is supposed to teach people. Um, I could I could give you names of at least uh, five to ten uh, players who are between the age groups of 14 to 16 who are really, really good at this game. They can hand my ass to me on a platter. They're so good at this game. People learn the game more quickly than you can imagine. So having the excuse to make it easy for the newer players doesn't make any sense in my eyes. But once again, if the devs thought it was a good reason, whatever, I, I, I just don't see it. And for me, ACR was a step back from ACB except except for the fact um, or except for one thing they introduced the new game mode uh, that became uh, my favorite uh, deathmatch um, so before acr in acb uh, anyone who's uh, played with me in acb or since acb know uh, that i was um, more of a wanted and assassinate mainly assassinate player but with acr changes assassinate was never the same to me it just died it just died with acr so I just found my new favorite game mode and I just stuck with it. That's it. I didn't complain. I didn't rant. I didn't uh, feel the need uh, to make the devs change the game uh, mode back to the way it was. I just found my different uh, comfort zone, so as to say. I moved on. But um, for me, ACR was a step back from ACB. And the next game, uh, which was Assassin's Creed 3, from this they uh, added another change uh, which was merging the kill and stun button and even for this one of the reasons uh, that i heard devs give was that uh, the different kill and stun buttons was confusing to new players i mean really do you think um, a player cannot manage an effective way to use these different keys no that's a stupid reason and i i I stand to believe that this was not the only reason they had to make this change but they wanted to add uh, the stealth uh, concept to it. What I mean by that is uh, if you see uh, your pursuer in a blend group you see the B prompt or 
or the circle prompt on top of their head uh, which actually tells you that they're, you, they're after you. So it was easy for people to actually spot your pursuers but going by Ubisoft's logic to help it balance or make it easier for newer players doesn't it mean that they had to actually keep this change if it was making it so easy to spot your pursuers? Logically, yes, they should have uh, kept different keys. Merging it, it's, it's only making it harder for new players. But uh, reasons aside, they did it. But if they did it, I have nothing against it. At first I thought it was cool uh, because you could uh, get focus stuns or you could get easy or good hidden kills or it emphasized uh, the use of disguise more. Um, but at the same time, they should have thought about how easy it is to contest anyone because given the lag uh, the game throws at us even though you're being really really stealthy anyone with bad connection is going to see you floating in the air or stuttering as you walk something like that which gives away that you're not an npc when games has such kind of limitations when it's easy for someone with the common sense to figure out who could be a player and an npc they just have to mash one button now to contest. Either they get to kill you or stun you. They don't have to worry about uh, who that could be. They just have to press one button. This is what most people did in AC3. Um, I don't know if they actually thought this could happen, such a thing could happen or not, but it did. And um, if they really wanted to have the single kill and stun button, they should have nerfed uh, the contested kills and honorable deaths, at least in my opinion. They should have somehow tried to change the way contested kills work. But they kept everything the same and they just added this. Which added to more um, imbalance uh, with the game styles in my opinion again. I should, I think I should stop saying my opinion because um, <laughs> this is what it is right? Uh, a video about my opinions. <laughs> but anyways. Um, and AC3 was a step back from ACR. Uh, with ACR I was missing ACB. And as I was playing AC3, I was beginning to miss ACR. So once again and yet again, AC3 was a step back from ACR to me personally. And with AC4, um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, the changes that they did was really good. In fact, really, really good. Uh, like the scoring system revamp was amazing, was brilliant. Um, it was really well thought out, but they failed on on something really really silly um, and once again this doesn't make any sense to me logically speaking um, they did increase your pursuers to six right okay okay assume that it's a good move okay assume that your pursuers is now not three or four anymore but six instead I would have assumed that the game would have given me more abilities to effectively stun someone right isn't isn't that kind of obvious to expect when you have more pursuers now to have more abilities to defend yourself with no they don't do that they do completely opposite thing by actually nerfing every defensive ability and taking out the chases I mean come on really taking out the chases when you have six pursuers if anything they should have made chases more easier and made it easy to escape a chase but they went on a completely opposite direction and they did these changes but I don't even know what to say to that it just doesn't make sense it overrides all sorts of logic to me nothing that they can say justifies this to me nothing now talk about uh, the ladder system this is what actually um, uh, made me talk to the devs or rant out to them a little bit this is about the ladders right ACB ladder was different uh, it was perfect it worked it was amazing it was it was uh, emphasizing more on quality gameplay not quantitative gameplay but with newer games you had to play more I mean the more you played the game the better your ranking was um, which is okay which is uh, debatable at best but um, they added one more uh, change I think it was in AC3 where they added this I'm not too sure um, they added uh, a new feature where if you quit uh, a game in between a game it would deduct points from you more points than you would have lost if you actually lost the game 
so they did that which is actually good because they didn't want people to back out of games when they realized that they were not uh, winning but um, what was the actual issue here I mean if they left what was happening if they leave was it that the guys who were actually uh, winning didn't get the points I mean if that was the case wasn't it much simpler to just uh, make it so that if people left no matter what uh, happened the other team who didn't quit would get points wouldn't that have been much simpler I mean what was the need to punish them okay granted that you wanted to punish them fine which is which which I'm still fine with but the problem that I have with this approach is that the game kicks you out of your games so many times it disconnects you from the host um, you're while you're not the host maybe a host is a different player who has a very bad internet connection the game kicks you out of his game because he's the host and you're having bad connection to him when the game kicks you out when you're not backing out of the game doesn't it stand obvious that you should not lose points for that but the game deducts points for that I mean every time they screw up and they kick you out of the game they deduct points because they don't have a way to find out if you actually left the game or if you um, got kicked by the game when I talked to the devs they said that um, such a thing can be done which which is stupid to me because I'm a software guy and um, anyone who is in the field of software development know um, that uh, nothing is impossible when it comes to software maybe they don't have a solution yet or maybe they haven't thought about a solution yet but if they want to have a solution to that they can most definitely have a solution no matter what but when they said that uh, such a thing doesn't exist it's impossible for them to know for sure if you left the game um, or if you disconnected your uh, router or if you unplugged your ethernet uh, it's uh, when they said that they cannot detect that I didn't know what to say because um, if I got disconnected from the game but I still was connected to Xbox Live isn't it reasonable to assume that there's a way to check that like is it really impossible to ch tell if I lost connection to the game servers and Xbox Live or just Xbox Live or just the game servers there has to be a way but um, the way they approached the whole thing was little little unprofessional to me but but at the same time um, I didn't feel like complaining too much about it um, because it's it's my own personal thing you know I'm biased uh, when when someone uh, who's in the software field says that they can't do some things it, it kind of like bugs me personally so I didn't uh, read too much into it and just ignored it and um, yeah so I can I can go on um, talking about the issues for days honestly um, but I think I'm gonna uh, stop with my rant um, I think we've had enough of that I think it's more than 30 minutes now since I've been talking <sighs> I didn't really expect the video to be this long I might end up uh, cutting some portions off of it or um, maybe keep it I don't know I haven't decided anything yet but um, yeah that, that's pretty much it so just to summarize, um, the game has been uh, taking a step backwards ever since ACB. That's as simple as I can just summarize the whole thing as. But um, let me know what you uh, thought about some things I mentioned or talked about in this video. Just while you're uh, at it, just try to keep it civil. Please let just try to have an argument or a discussion and just not name calling or just saying how uh, one's opinion is invalid that's not the case everyone's opinion is valid to some extent so let's just try to see um, what's what's um, the different ways to see about certain things but um, but yeah let me know in the comment section below and have fun peace out